by Grace. <laughs> March 23rd? Yep. 2023. We're Sid and Mackie, and we're professional mountain bikers on a quest to race the best and most challenging mountain bike races around the world. This race, Moab Rocks, absolutely falls into that category with three days of single track heavy racing on Moab's unforgiving and unique terrain. This year, this race is part of the inaugural single track series and the competition is stiff. If I look back to like the first year we were here, there was a couple fast people in each race. But now it's like people that have raced and continue to race World Cups, Olympic Games, World Championships. We were a little unsure how we were going to feel going to this race after just finishing a five day stage race in Chile less than two weeks ago, but tired legs turn out to be the least of our problems. Buckle up for a wild ride. Oh, no, don't follow me, don't follow me. And join us for a weekend of plot twists, 11th hour crises, and some good old fashioned bad luck. That's the area where it gets very, very bad. So that's the area where you're gonna have to be very careful. Something like an 11th hour crisis to get you going in the morning. Things have escalated a bit. That was time consuming. It's just not gonna be easy today. Well, I've had really good luck at this race for a number of years. So, had to run out sometime. But we're not ones to let a little chaos get us down, and despite all that, it's going to be a lot of fun. If you enjoy these videos, hit that subscribe button and help us get to 100K. All right, let's get going. Opened it like a new present, and like there was that like, oh. whoa, <laughs> moment in there. For you or for me? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not a, a popular time to be registering right now. <laughs> we want to say thank you to Mitch and Luis who reached out on email and offered us the use of their amazing condo here in Moab for this race. We've pretty much always gotten the condo for Moab Rocks because it's spring, it likes to rain slash snow. It's hailing. Having a condo is really nice. This one though, really nice. Here's Rocco. This is Coach Mike's son. Here's Coach Mike. <laughs> Here's Sid. <laughs> Here's Amanda. This is our home for the week. I am very excited. It's very nice. And it's not on the third floor, which is a big plus compared big to plus. last year. Yeah. When you're at a bike race, garage is extremely important. There's enough space to put Coach Mike's car and bicycles and still work on them and stuff. So that's good. Hose, washing bikes, which we're probably gonna have to do. One bedroom in here. This is the other or second bedroom with bathroom. And then you can tell which bedroom is ours because it's Chaos on sweet bathroom. Dinner time! Yay, Yay! What are we having for dinner? Pasta. Instant pot pasta. I've never done this before. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend. <laughs> it was a uh, it slightly overcooked and we created a geyser. Yum 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 yum. I was just having dreams last night. Or not even dreams, but like, you know, when you're trying to fall asleep and your brain is just like showing you every possible way you could like wad up and hurt yourself. I've ridden these trails so many times, I'm not like scared of them. I don't know why that was happening. It is currently 26 degrees, feels like 20. So that's cold. A little bit of a shock. We've started races in the cold before. We'll be fine. A lot of really fast people are here this year. It's part of the single track series, so the level has been bumped up, which is really cool. Good news is that they pushed the start back to 9.30. Normally it's an eight o'clock start, so a little bit warmer, a little bit more time for the trails to dry out. We get to wear new kits. The bad news is we have to ruin them by putting on leg warmers and arm warmers. For a moment, we could enjoy the kit like it is supposed to look. And this is a good time to tell you that this is the last week to order your Be More Awesome kits, which are exactly the same as these, except they don't have the sponsor logos. They say, Be More Awesome. 
you look slightly cold. 8.43 a.m. We are heading off to warm up. Got my warm up gloves on. Got my puffy coat on. Underneath that, I have a windbreaker. And the fact that if there is an injury, it's gonna take us about three or four hours to evacuate you. This is gonna be a neutralized stage from here. We're not gonna race the stage today because I don't want you guys racing through there. We've had to do a medical here before um, and it's taken us about five hours to get them down off of Porcupine. All right, well. You don't have to do the stage. You can race the rest of the weekend. You're not gonna be held back. It's basically gonna be a two day race. At this point, pandemonium ensued as everyone tried to decide what to do. After a slightly chaotic five minutes, Mackie and I made the call to bail on the neutralized stage to avoid wrecking our bikes or the trails and head instead up to Captain Ahab Trail with our friends Aaron and Andrew. After seeing photos from Porcupine where we were supposed to race, we're pretty sure this was the right call. All right, we have Aaron demonstrating what I will also be doing, which is taking socks and shoes off and walking across the river. And here's Mackie demonstrating the, the hold my beer version. Hold my beer! <laughs> oh! You ready? Ready! One, two, three. Oh! oh nice! <laughs> That's harder than it looks. Yeah. Nice! Woo! -hoo -hoo. Woo! Ah! We did it. You have very cold feet. Nice. Man, this place is so pretty. So I'm actually really stoked that we are getting to ride Ahab after many years of not riding Ahab. While I was initially a little apprehensive about riding Ahab on a 100 mil bike. Where's the trailer? Oh, I don't like it. Okay, it's not that bad. It was actually very doable and a ton of fun, which was a great confidence boost going into tomorrow. <laughs> Woo, man, that trail's so fun. So on that note, let's try this again, shall we? Race morning, take two. Don't worry, it's 24 degrees out. Nice and balmy. <laughs> I think we probably have to do the getting out and the pumping up of the tires and the yeah. getting on the bicycle well, thing. Well, if you'd tell me what the pressure is. Oh. Dang. Dang. You, you, get, you can get a little spoiled. <laughs> As in past years, day two's course took place at the Klondike Bluffs trail system just north of Moab. But due to the precipitation the day before, the Trans Rockies crew made some big changes to the course to avoid mud on the Jurassic Trail and the 4x4 road. So instead of the usual two big climbs and two big descents of previous years, there was only one big climb and one big descent. And instead of finishing with a long section of dyno flow, it used a long section of EKG, thus named for some combo of how it looks on the map, its elevation profile, and the effect it has on your heart rate. Having ridden EKG before, we guessed that most people would underestimate just how hard it was going to be and would assume the 23 and a half mile stage with 3000 feet of climbing would be a lot easier than it was going to be. Looking like an 11th hour crisis to get you going in the morning. I touched my drop and post lever and the ferrule broke, which we think is because it's so stinking cold out here. So we pulled the cable out, put a new ferrule on. And now we just have to see if Mac and Mike can get it back in. Things have escalated a bit. They pulled out the whole drop and post like, and cable. Like, now you're right, I guess we'll leave the housing, the housing, because it... Try the, just try the cable. Even if you've got ice on the housing, a new cable, it should, should still roll. Okay, I think we did it. Five, four, 
three, two, one, off you go! Right? so you can try to ride it. Thank you. Well, this is gonna have to be a dab and go. I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out what happened here since these exact tires made it through five days of sharper, rougher terrain at Trans Andes without any issues. Here's what I've concluded. First, I took a bad line. About 30 seconds before this, I went through a spot that's on, known for on. causing flats, and I thought I'd gone through it carefully enough, but apparently not. Second, I should have checked my tire sealant before this race, because if I'd had enough sealant in the tire, it might have sealed on its own. I have no excuse for why I didn't, except for the fact that it had worked so well at Trans Andes that I assumed it was fine. Third, there is always a component of luck in mountain biking. Even if I had taken a better line and checked my sealant ahead of time, I still might have flatted. That's just the way it is, and the only thing you can do is fix it as quickly as possible and try to make up the time you lost. Oh man, that 
really sucks. I'd almost bridge to those guys. It's okay, it's okay. Stay focused. Okay, that was time consuming. But, thus is life. So, now, we're just gonna focus. We're gonna ride hard. We're gonna make up what time we can. You guys see a good spot. Thanks for toast. I could sneak by you uh, right up here in one of these corners. Actually, I take that back. I'm gonna have to stop and put some more air in. Oh no. You got it, buddy. Okay. We seem to be slow leaking. If it were easy, it wouldn't be mountain biking. Come on, I really need you to work for me. I've had really good luck at this race for a number of years, so I had to run out sometime. It's just a real bummer that it was this year when I'm fitter than I've ever been and was feeling good today. Okay, Mackie, look ahead. Let's go catch some people on this to say you know it. Mind if I got a pass here in your spot? Yeah.
Thank you. Flat tire. any advantage I might have had on the descent by making a really boneheaded wrong turn so that was a little, a little disappointed in myself there but it's been a while since we're on these trails this is how it goes You're good. Uh, it's coming on here. Go for it. Sorry. Now I'm sure I'll get lost around the next corner. Let's just. Freaking EKG, man.
help me. I have some sort of issue. What the hell is it? No, my timing chip just fell into my wheel. Hey, we're good. Oh my god. What was that? Cool view on the head. Oh man, it's so good. <laughs> Dude, Matt feels so good. I've never really ridden with you. I know, man. We've raced together, but never ridden together. <laughs> yeah. You know how some races you don't really trust your lines? Yeah. You trust your lines, but I haven't even ridden with you. I do my best to do decent ones. Mackie Franklin and Stephen Devine across the line. Like that, right? Nice man, that was fun. Yeah. Hey, Sid Schultz, Daniel Nelson. Good job. Hey, nice work. Sid P9 in our women's pro. Wow. Okay, talk me through it. Um, I would say it was it went about how I could have predicted. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. Like, unsurprisingly. I was not ready to do 400 watts for 15 minutes at the start, which is what it would have been required for me okay. to stay with the group. Literally one point I looked down and I was doing, it said 700. <laughs> and Mike had said, don't go over 295. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and pause myself there because this was one of those rare occasions where looking at the results actually made me happier about my performance. In an honest assessment, I made a lot of sloppy mistakes out there. I mean, honestly, the whole thing, I just didn't feel like I was doing my best bike r bicycle riding ever. So I was actually a little shocked to be ninth out of 28 pro women in a super competitive field, and only a few minutes behind women like Erin Hawk and Sarah Sturm, who are absolute legends in this sport. This made me super stoked for where my fitness is right now and excited to see what I can do tomorrow. Despite the mechanical, I actually am extremely stoked about today's race. To be basically riding with those guys, or I should have been riding with those guys had I not flatted, that's a big deal. Those guys are very fast. That speaks extremely positively to the work I've done this year, to where I am fitness-wise, the training, the diet stuff. Obviously, it's a bummer to have a flat like that, but that happens. This is my fourth time racing Moab Rocks and my first time having a mechanical like that. It was bound to happen. Like Moab is just brutal on equipment. It happened. I am now going to very much prioritize recovery because I want tomorrow to be able to like be up there and kind of prove what I can do. Right, but it's this so one especially weird. given my luck or lack thereof today, 
Yeah. Should I just go for it and see what can happen tomorrow, or should I play it smarter? Well, Looking that, at this from like a longer term perspective. Should you send it? Yeah. Basically, should I send it? Send it. <laughs>